Now we come to uh, question number four. We have a pulse given whose amplitude is one for t less than t minus one. That is for t positive t one or uh, minus t one. Uh, its value is one. This is how it is represented, and its value is zero for all other values of t. So it is zero beyond t one and before t minus 1. And in this case also we need to find the Fourier transform. So we use the formula. This is the formula. And now the limit, because the signal is only existing from t minus t1 to plus t1, therefore this limit will, uh, we can now change it to minus t1 to plus t1 and its value is 1. And uh, we know at all other places the signal is zero. Okay, so this becomes uh, the integral, and we take the integral. It is one over j omega minus one over j omega e raised to the power minus j omega t, and the two limits. And now putting the two limits, we get these two terms, e minus j omega t1 and minus e j omega t1. Because minus and minus will become plus, that is why we have a plus sign here. And this we can write in this form. We multiply by 2 and we divide by 2 and we bring the j also inside. So this form, why we are doing this? Because this is a Euler formula. I hope you remember what is Euler formula. If not, you can search. This is the Euler formula. That is sine of theta is e j theta minus e minus j theta divided by 2j. So this is exactly same form. Just for theta we have omega t1. So, we can write this in the form of a sine, so 2 omega, and this part from here is sine omega t1. So, this is the uh, transform. We can further simplify. We bring the omega on this side, so it is 2 sine omega t1. And here also uh, we play a technique that we multiply by t1 and divide by t1. And why we are doing this is that we want to get it into form of sine x over x. So this is now sine x over x form. And we know that limit x tends to 0 sin x over x is equal to 1. And so limit omega tends to 0 sin omega t1 divided by omega t1 is equal to 1. So for this we can now write 1. Okay. So when this becomes 1, then the answer is 2t1. But when, at what point this becomes 1 is when omega tends to 0. So that means in the graph, when the omega tends to 0 or omega is 0, the value will be 2t1. So 2t1 because this term becomes uh, 1. Also at omega is equal to pi t1. So if we put omega is equal to pi t1 in this case, then t1 t1 cancels as, and this becomes uh, sin pi. And we know that sin pi is 0. So this is the point that we get. Now since this is a sinusoidal signal, sinusoidal signal, the graph should be sinusoidal, but because it is being divided by omega, which is gradually increasing, 
can see the omega is gradually increasing that means the amplitude of the sine will be gradually reducing and that is what we can see here on both sides so this is the shape that we get uh, for this type of a signal this is also called sync signal we will see in the next uh, problem so this is how we are getting this value <coughs> Okay, and the last question. Now in this case, the Fourier transform is given and we need to find the original signal XT or the inverse Fourier transform. So consider the signal XT whose Fourier transform is this and this is uh, again one value one for omega less than 1 or mod of omega less than 1 that is for omega plus and uh, sorry for w plus and w minus the value of the signal is 1 and for all other w's omega greater than w's its value is 0 so its value is 0 on both sides but just uh, as in the previous example in that case it was t and now it is omega because it, this is the transform signal and we need to plot the inverse Fourier transform. So we take help of the inverse Fourier theorem or inverse uh, Fourier transform. This is also called a synthesis equation. So the uh, it is given by xt1 over pi integral and the transform and ej omega t d omega. So we'll put the values uh, in here. So again, limit uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity will now reduce to minus w to plus w because at all other places the signal is zero. So the limit is minus w to plus w and its value is one e j omega t d omega. So multiply by one, it becomes as shown here. Now a point to note that here the variable is omega and not t and that is why I have written j omega t as j t omega because this is the uh, variable and we can just integrate this so we get 1 over j t t is constant e j t omega and the limit is minus w to plus w And we follow the exactly same pattern as in we did in the last example. We'll try to make this equal to sine. We're putting the limit, we got these two. And this two we bring in and we j bring in. So what remains outside is one over pi t and this is now in the form of a sine so from the Euler formula we learned that it can be written as sine omega t so sine omega uh, sine w t sorry sine w t divided by pi t and here again we want to write it in the form of sine x over x so omega t we have to bring it here so we multiply by uh, sorry multiply by w and divide by w so this now becomes in the form of sine x over x so we were here and as we already discussed that since this is sine or sine x by x it will follow this pattern of reducing sine signal uh, gradually reducing and now let's see what is the value at t is equal to zero so uh, we saw this thing that limit extending to zero it become one so in this case also limit t tending to 
zero, this will become one. So at t is equal to zero, this term is one. So we get w over pi. W over pi is the value or the amplitude as t is equal to zero. And at other places, actually we want to make uh, this uh, we at t uh, pi by omega that is we want to make this term as zero so for omega if we replace it by uh, for t if we replace by pi omega uh, sorry pi w then w w cancels and pi remains and that is why we are taking t is equal to pi w so now putting the value of t this will become sine w pi divided by w and this term now when w w cancels this becomes sine pi and sine pi is zero therefore this whole term will become zero and that is why at pi by w the value is zero and gradually you can plot if you want but this is the pattern and as i was mentioning a, a function of this type is called sync function and sync function has a peculiarity that its value is one at sine is equal to sin x is equal to zero. So at x is equal to zero, the value is one, and that is what we got from here. This value is one. And at all other places it is sine x over x, and putting the values of x now you can calculate the actual value. I hope this gives you some idea as to how to solve the Fourier transform problems. If it was of helpful, please subscribe my channel. Thank you.